Hello all, Rick here looking into the origin of a vessel that launched the new era of Star Trek. A real life summary, then an in-universe one followed by its specifications as normal this time, the Crossfield class science ship. So, the real world origin of the Crossfield class was as the poster vessel for Star Trek Discovery, and as such the decision was made to look back into Star Trek's history of design to create a new vessel. However, Brian Fuller had also made the decision to radically distinguish the show from anything seen before, as the plan was to create a vision of the future, not a recreation of the original series. Additionally, the original premise of Discovery would have been more akin to a Spycraft series, so the vessel's design was informed by this too. Ralph McQuarrie and Ken Adams designed a concept for the Enterprise for a film that never was, the Planet of the Titans. This concept was never used, but the original design for the Discovery bore a stronger resemblance to this. However, this design too was scrapped and retooled into the design we see on the screens. The initial ideas for the design included the notion of moving parts and various proportional alterations to distinguish it from classic Starship profiles, like the list of Enterprises. Further inspiration was drawn from the 70s era ship designs rather than the original series ones, and other inspirations included gyroscopic space stations, the Klingon D7, okay then, and the XB-70 Valkyrie, which I totally see. The final design is attributed to John Eaves, who originally wanted to colour the Discovery across between NX-01 bare metal and the original series paint schemes, but this was later changed to gold and bronze to distinguish it, along with the early added mandates from above that under no circumstances was he to use round the cells. In Universe the Crossfield class was designed from the start to complement the fleet by being able to take Starfleet's scientific mandates to the stars. All vessels had a science department, of course, and even ships like the Constitution class had state-of-the-art facilities, but the Crossfield was envisioned early on to focus down on just this element and take it to its extreme. It was not going to be a particularly fast vessel, nor a reserved one. However, during its design phase, Starfleet found itself at war with the Klingon Empire, and this drastically changed the trajectory for this class. The initial crossfields were penned to be the USS Glenn, NCC-1030, and USS Discovery, NCC-1031, but the research of Paul Stamets and Justin Strahl changed the design. The desire to focus on the spore drive, a potential faster than warp alternative, meant that large parts of the superstructure were adapted for this theoretical drive in the final years of its development. The Starship was designed at San Francisco Fleet Yards and completed in 2256 with the installation of specific components done at McKinley Station and Neptune's test facilities. It is mentioned, however, that the Glen and Discovery are the only two such crossfields to house this drive and both of them were reported as being destroyed by it in the end, and in many ways this vessel was completely ahead of its time. Its initial mission profile was to make its way around Federation space investigating new phenomena and such, while its crew conducted experimentation and research for the benefit of the Federation, basically a floating science block of labs. Due to its role as a science vessel, it had strong multiphasic scanner systems, the best in the field at the time of its launch, and internally it had enough labs to simultaneously run over 300 projects at once. This is more projects than crew, so suffice to say the Crossfield was an active hub of research and development alongside continual studies. Unfortunately, the vessel was put under the command of a captain who treated it more akin to a warship and severely pushed its capabilities and crew. The vessel housed a state-of-the-art Zeotronic computer core with massive amounts of data storage, meaning it could maintain an extensive onboard library of information beyond that of a standard Starfleet vessel. In many areas of the ship too, there were installed hollow projectors, which were also rather ahead of its time and the technology was not faultless. In fact, on other vessels it caused shipwide system failures, so Starfleet pulled that system, not reintroducing it until the late 24th century. Seeing a theme already, it was an ambitious vessel that saw mixed success. Additionally, much of its mission profile was classified due to the wartime secrecy of the Spore Drive project, so a lot of details would later be buried. So, 
The size of the Crossfield class has it listed officially at 750 metres long, which is massive for a vessel of the 23rd century, although yes, most of its size is due to the nacelles. However, this led to some scaling issues when compared to other vessels of the time, which were then also increased in size to avoid looking dwarfed. I am not going into all that here as this video is just for the Crossfield, but why not just make the vessel to scale with existing ships in the first place? I said I'm not going to get into it, moving on. This means that it was 301 metres wide and had 17 decks. It additionally only had a crew of 180, which is not many considering its size, and it's likely that with its extensive labs it was supposed to hold more, but due to wartime effects this was scaled back. That's speculation though, but it could house up to 885. Its cruising speed was only warp 6 on the 23rd century warp scale, with a maximum safe velocity of warp 7. Its theoretical and unsafe maximum was warp 8.3, which is still vastly slower than that of a Constitution class, but the Crossfield was not made for speed. Ironically, its main impulse engines could accelerate 2.3 of light speed, and it was very manoeuvrable for its bulk. The two prototypes, however, were also equipped and designed around the Spore Drive, which could make a 90 light year jump in only 1.3 seconds when it was working. The outer ring of the saucer section was loaded with subspace coils and fusion reactors with high levels of insulation and shielding to contain the intense subspace field generated, but this was not a part of the original nor later crossfields, so I'll put it aside for now. Armament-wise, the Crossfield class was outfitted with 14 phaser arrays, each placement being two dual ball turrets, and it had three photon torpedo launchers, two saucer mounted four and one aft. However, we also see some things launched from the nacelles and under the hull, but I think this is just a gaff. The vessel was not made for combat, but was capable of defending itself and had very powerful shields, enabling it to weather many hits. Creative usage of a Crossfield's other scientific projects, however, could bolster any offensive capability. In terms of auxiliary craft, it had a complement of 10 shuttles of varying sizes, with around 4 kept on standby at the expansive main shuttle bay on the rear of the vessel. This many ships made it a good hub of activity when setting into a system for the first time, but the addition of the spore drive also kind of stands in opposition to this role. More ammunition for the idea that the Crossfield was defined and existed before the drive was added, which is also the case in many apocryphal materials such as the Star Trek Adventures source books. In fact, this book also mentions how sections of the Crossfield superstructure were left unfilled, akin to the Galaxy class during the Dominion War, and that this may be the reason for the large empty sections we see in Star Trek Discovery. Ah, uh, memory beta content coming to the rescue when thought was not given in canon. I could see that being a justification that with only 180 crew why would you need all these additional labs when the primary purpose was now as the spore drive testbed. Just get it launched as soon as it's capable. There is a war on after all, but still not a huge fan and even its schematics show it having a proper deck layout. So schematically one thing, visually another. So, in Strange New Worlds, we also see a class of vessel that was bodged together in secret by the extremist group Broken Circle. This vessel was identified as a Crossfield class, but that was an assumption based on visual inspection and it was constructed on debris from Starfleet and other vessels. However, the saucer did bear a resemblance to the Crossfield class, but it was slightly different. Now. The superstructure of the prototypes actually included a rotational area that needed to spool up for a spore drive jump, and as part of that system, it's possible that this was removed or not a part of the original Crossfield design, hence the alternate design here. In the 32nd century there is also a new Crossfield design, however this was formed from the bones of the original Crossfield class getting an extensive overhaul, so it's currently unclear if this is a one-off 
or that this will become a new class of vessel, so for now it's just a unique variation that I'll treat as a separate entity. I try to keep my personal opinion out of videos when it comes to recounting lore, but the Crossfield class feels so... I like how it looks, but some of the design choices baffle me, like the scale, Hypno Disc Saucer, and Open Interiors. That stuff would have been so easily remedied early on, but now we're still dealing with the knock-on effects of the class, sparking cannon debates and so on. At least I think the janky origin for the vessel is sort of being tied into its background too, with the vessel clearly being at odds with how it was used early on. The Crossfield class was kind of having an identity crisis. In this, at least, it sort of fits. It was an overly ambitious experiment from Starfleet, larger than any ship they had made so far, filled with more science labs than it required, possibly launched with the cavernous zones yet to be filled in its superstructure, and with a drive that resulted in ethical violations and ultimately was reported as a bust. Putting it nicely, the vessel was ahead of its time, but you could also say it was an experiment that taught Starfleet some valuable lessons, even in failure. I think both are true, and that it is only by pushing limits that we can find where our limits are, so that we can then work to exceed them at a better pace. And that is the Crossfield class. Thanks for watching this breakdown on a complicated vessel. I've been Rick, and until the next one, goodbye.